You hear that? It's the sound of children sleep. Hey, welcome back to the Ping Pong Flick Show. My name is Chris Wong. Today we're going to be talking about Suicide Squad 3 talk. Apparently there's going to be a Zack Snyder's Justice League 2 and 3 motion comic. More news from The Flash and an ending that could change the DCEU forever. Let's get right into it. Now remember the Deadline exclusive yesterday where Henry Cavill is going to have his very own spy franchise called Argyle. Well, underneath that tweet that Deadline put out, I noticed another tweet tweet from giant freaking robot who said that we broke this story a month ago huh what else did they get right but there was one news topics that they put out today in regards to the dcu and this is about james gunn and his suicide squad warner brothers wants james gunn to direct a suicide squad 3 project and only james gunn they also want him to be in charge of more shows focusing on other Suicide Squad characters. I'm not really surprised by this because from what I've heard of the test screenings and the two short reviews about the Suicide Squad, it seems like it's a winner. And whenever Warner Brothers sees a winner, they're gonna try to make more. And it seems like James Gunn wants to stick in that Suicide Squad territory and not really go anywhere else like Superman or Green Lantern or any of the other characters. But there's a lot of characters obscured characters that he probably wants to play with. But remember this report I talked about last time where James Gunn actually revealed all the different characters that he almost used for the Suicide Squad or may use for a future movie. Yeah, he actually has a foul folder of characters that he was considering. Like he said, here's just a few of many that didn't make the cut for now. And one of the characters that he showed there was Destro, which I'm really excited and I'm hoping not for the sake of James Gunn, but for the sake of Joe Manganiello, who never got to have any action scenes as Deathstroke. Like, he literally put on the suit and everything, and all he did was talk, because we didn't get to see his Batman vs. Deathstroke movie. We didn't get to see him in Zack Snyder's Justice League 2. Maybe, possibly, if James Gunn utilizes him in his movie, he could do it like Peacemaker and spin off Joe Manganiello's Deathstroke as its own HBO Max series. Now, not everyone's gonna like James Gunn's style, understandably, but hopefully he's gonna allow Joe Manganiello have creative input into the project as well. And that could be really exciting. Speaking of Zack Snyder's Justice League, this was revealed from the Culture Nerd and Lightcast. In quarter three of 2021, Lightcast Films presents the Dreamscapes of Justice League, a motion comic. What? Whoa! The original storyboards collaborated by Zack Snyder, Jim Lee, and Jeff Johns for the intended Justice League 2 were released March 6th, 2021 in Dallas, Texas at the AT&T Discovery District to promote H.O. Max's Zack Snyder's Justice League. The motion comic being released alongside an AFSP charity event will feature narration from the one and only Ray Porter Darkseid himself with the starring cast of Harry Lennox, Karen Bryson, Sam Benjamin. I'm going to bet Sam Benjamin is going to be Hal Jordan. Scott Fowler, Riddler, of course, Presley Coker, Richard Citrone, Christina Wren, also including people from the fandom like Wonder Meg, Liz Wonder, Dave Avery, Geraldo Cortez, Anthony Sherfield, and nerdy in many ways, Dawson. The motion comic will feature new artwork by Mariano de Venezia, colorist and comic book artist from Argentina, and 18-year-old Luis Pedrigo, VFX artist from Peru. And here's a little snippet that they released on YouTube. I don't want him dead. I want Superman to submit. Whoa, Ray Porter! Oh, he sounds amazing! Dark Side's back, but this time it is a motion comic. I can't wait to see this. It's the next best thing to animation. Obviously, I'm really excited to have Zack Snyder's Justice League 2 and 3 to come out as an official movie. But in the meantime, this unofficial fan project could really be helpful in spreading the word about Justice League 2 and 3. Maybe getting more people excited about restoring the Snyderverse. And it's helping out the AFSP, the American Foundation of Suicide Prevention. Why not? Now, something fishy is going on with McCod Brooks. Remember him? He was Jax Briggs in Mortal Kombat 
and he was also Jimmy Olsen in Supergirl. Apparently, he went on Instagram and traded his Instagram profile with a Green Lantern logo. What? There's two theories here that I have about this whole thing. First theory is that this may have something to do with the Green Lantern HBO Max series. After all, it's going to be called Green Lantern Corps, but they're still missing some members of the entire group. The second theory, in the Green Lantern HBO Max series, it's obviously missing the core members from the core. Hal Jordan, Jon Stewart, and Kyle Rayner. Where are they? Well, apparently Warner Brothers is still making that Green Lantern film. And I'm thinking, I'm guessing that the Warner Brothers Studios may have chosen McCod Brooks as their Jon Stewart. He did pretty good as Jax Briggs in Mortal Kombat, and maybe that was just enough that Warner Bros. says, hey, why don't you be our Jon Stewart? Now, I would have loved it if Wayne T. Carr actually was Jon Stewart in that movie, but understandably, we'll probably won't get to see him as Jon Stewart Green Lantern until they actually allow Zack Snyder to make Zack Snyder's Justice League 2 and 3. So in the meantime, I think the studios is still going to make their own Green Lantern movie. More stuff coming from The Flash! Now, a while back, Pictures Vehicles Limited, a company that worked on a lot of movies actually posted a picture of the Michael Keaton Batmobile. They are very much involved in the Flash project. Well, they posted a curious picture today that was scratching a lot of people's head. And this is what they showed us. Wait a minute, is that the Batman and Robin symbol? <laughs> Oh my god, it is the Batman and Robin symbol. Now, we already know that Aaron Cummings had told John Campion there are a lot of people who are going to show up in the Flash movie, not only Michael Keaton. Could this mean that Chris O'Donnell could actually show up in Batman and Robin? Does anybody know where Chris O'Donnell is right now? Now this is interesting, could this really mean anything at all other than just maybe an easter egg that's placed on a table? That's it? If there is something more to this, this could be huge. Chris O'Donnell coming back as Robin or Nightwing in the Flash movie? Maybe this is how they're really trying to expand the Bat family here. We already know that there's going to be a Batgirl and that's supposed to spin off from this Batman. Maybe Michael Keaton's going to be training her. Maybe he could also use the help of Nightwing as well. Is Dick Grayson going to show up in the Flash film? I guess we'll have to wait and see. Speaking of the Flash film, one of the big things people want to know is what's going to happen after the Flash movie? This is coming from Daniel Rickman, aka Daniel RPK. Apparently, the ending of the Flash movie will create a new DCEU. Now, this is not surprising because I figured this would be the case where the Warner Brothers is going to want to create a singular universe that they want to expand over the life of the different movies. But Daniel Rickman offers this as well that they are going to create a new DCU continuity, but it keeps the door open for numerous pocket realities to exist, which many are saying that that could mean that they're allowing the Snyderverse to exist as well, which could be great. I think that would be awesome. But why are they letting that happen if they're saying that the Snyderverse was really a road that leads to nowhere? But this could be the testament to what Scoot in the film industry said that Walter Hamada lost every battle with Andy Muschietti except for the fact that he couldn't include Ray Fisher in the movie. So maybe one of those things that Walter Hamada lost was trying to erase the Snyderverse. So I'm really hopeful and optimistic that Andy Muschietti and Barbara Muschietti are trying their best to keep all the worlds together even though Warner Brothers wants to erase one of them. And maybe one of these indications will be actually shown during the DC fandom when they release the full-blown trailer or teaser that they have for The Flash. You know that part of that leak that we kind of saw? Until then, I think we're just going to be racking our brain over The Flash over and over until we're like, Oh my god, what is happening with this movie? But I guess in October, we'll just have to see what Andy Muschietti has for us at... Did you hear that? Oh, crap!